Uh, so uh, I have given this uh, talk before Christmas, and um, which was a uh, one of the talk very fast. And so basically, these lectures now, uh, the next few lectures, I will say the same thing again, more slowly, and uh, hopefully more understandably with a bit more background. Okay, so. <laughs> Um, so we work with perfect numbers, and uh, we want to study the, the topology of modular space for sheets and surfaces. Okay, so maybe just uh, to be sure, you can say two words about what is the Butler space. Um, so, just in general terms, I don't give a precise definition. So, um, so, for me, this will be essentially an algebraic variety or scheme. Which parameterizes uh, some objects parameterized naturally, some objects you are interested in. So, I mean, this is a bit vague, so parameterizes roughly means. If I take the points of the modelized space, say over the complex numbers, for instance, modelized space called M, M of C will just be uh, the objects we want to know about. And naturally, means that if we have a family of objects, so algebraic family of objects, so C over C is a family of such objects, then it follows we get morphism. And it's corresponding to the family. So obviously I haven't told what the family is. So it means it's somehow something parameterized by C, so lying over C with a morphism for C, such that the, the fiber over every point E and C is one such object we want to study. And uh, usually one to make the family one requires some property like flatness. Okay, but anyway, this is just me. Now, um, let's look at some. So, the morphism obviously should correspond to the obvious map that to, that to a point T in C, we associate whatever lies over C. So, the, the point corresponding to the object of what lies over the point T. Okay, so this is maybe a bit weak, but. You know, as we talk so general, so let's look at first my favorite example, which is the root of C minus one. So let's just do it in the case that S is a smooth projective surface. So then we say with two more points, I know this like this, or also as this parameterizes the zero dimensional sub schemes of S of length of degree N. So the point in the Hilbert scheme uh, corresponds to Z zero dimensional. Now, what does that 
Mm -hmm. So, for the general point of this table schemes, we just see a set of n points on S. When these points come together, we have a multiple scheme structure, which is given as we can first be discussed as the ideal sheet. So D in this end is given uh, the ideal sheet of C vanishing there, which is the structure sheet has a uh, look the structure sheet of the scheme, which by definition is just OS divided by the ideal sheet. Um, that this is this finite form. Lives on finite points. And uh, uh, we have that what I could call the degree of set or the length of set, which can either be considered as the state of global sections of the structure sheet, which is the same as the sum of all points in the support of set of uh, the dimension of the local range. And this number is what that was the thing. Okay, so this is the table scheme. And uh, so to look at more concrete examples, we finish the table scheme. Zero point is just one point corresponding to the empty. So no point. By zero point. If I take the table scheme at one point, that's S. Points of this other point of S. Take the equation of two points. This consists of there are two possibilities. Either we have two distinct points, or we have a point and a double structure, which is the same as a tangent vector. As a point. And then the global description will be as follows. We take the product of S to itself, we blow it up along the diagonal, and then we divide by the action of the symmetric group, which brings these two facts. So, in general, it was shown by progress. Uh, that uh, this is non singular as selective as I mentioned. And the locus of the n distinct points zero. Okay, so this is a thing. Might also mention. So if you have, I haven't been here, not the precise of what the model life space is. Sometimes you have something which is called a fine modularized space, which means that it also has what is called a universal family over it. This is the case here. So you have the universal family. Which is, I can write you know, S to line on the product of S, which is equal to different points. It's a subscheme of this, 
in the set directory, I can just uh, describe it as an incident correspondence, which corresponds to a pair of points in the sub scheme of the state N, such as T actually divides in the sub scheme. And so this obviously has two projections. So it has the project via the second projection. So a Hilbert scheme of points. And this, this map is what is called flat of the VF. Okay. This is set was somehow for family, so I can view this as a family of zero dimensional subschemes parametrized by its end itself, namely uh, the inverse image under P of the subscheme of the point corresponding to a subscheme P is that So this is this example. <coughs> We will be interested in the topological invariants of one life cases. So let's look um, at the, the simplest topological invariant, which is the topological Euler number. So for the moment, I will restrict my attention to it. So, with some super nodes and homologies, the ultimate sums that I mentioned with the homologies or homologies to some zero dimension. To real dimension x uh, minus one to the i dimension h i x to the coefficient or homology uh, is a very simple invariant for instance it behaves nicely if you For instance, if y in x is closed, so closed separation, then uh, the Euler number of x is equal to the Euler number of y plus Euler of complement. property of the Euler number, and uh, also easy to see that Euler number.
right now, you know, if the modelized state for different values of the experiment are somehow related to each other, or proposed, that one can find a generating function for the invariance and in terms of the parameters, which is at a nice close expression. Um, later, when it's more convenient, I might sketch one of the many available proofs for this. But there's, I maybe not now. So, later means uh, not maybe at this lecture, but later lecture. In that sense. I mean, the, <clears throat> yeah. So now we were interested in what I see. I mean, the title from this one is the key for to teach those. So maybe one doesn't know that the whole not so it. the sheet is a generalization. Which of the vector bundle, and so one could view a sheet as a vector bundle with possible similarity. Uh, but there's no, I mean, I expect to. So, <clears throat> anyway, we look at one of these of sheets. So, I want to first, in case, so that we have the notation there, I want to record trans classes of vector bundles and sheets. So, just as we think, so it's a vector bundle on the side of X, so it's a vector bundle on the side of X. Let us say two things. So this is the class C of T, which is a vector one class in one of the on, which is the R, where the I turn class the I of T is um, in the homology of X. And uh, these uh, turn class classes somehow measure to some extent how far E is uh, away from being a trivial vector. So, in particular, for instance, the trivial bundle would be just the trivial bundle C to the N or H O to the N. So if I take C of O to the N, this will be one for turn class zero. And if you take a line bundle, you know, most likely you know you can have a line bundle associated with the divisor. Uh, and this is just one plus the plus four T in common. And uh, you know, it's a standard that if I take a direct sum of bundles, so this is a notation. So um, now we also want these for sheets and for more general things. So I briefly introduce uh, K groups so that we can talk about that. So so again, it's the X to the right. Look at the K group of vector bundles, which is K0 of X. This is just a normal linear combination. So K1, T1 plus KN, KN, where Zero, the AI are 
uh, integer and e i a vector function. Um, and so it's not quite bad. We have to divide by an equivalent relation. The equivalent relation is that we treat an exact sequence of vector bounds as a sum. So the equivalent relation is that f is equal to equivalent to the e plus g plus the sum of this. Um, if there exists. If um, we have an exact sequence, zero goes to zero. You can also look at another kind of K group, the K group of Julian sheets. Everywhere instead of vector bundles, we see put in sheets. Now, if X is non singular. Variety, we do have churn class for every fluid. Okay, so I don't know whether we, you know, maybe the mix of, I don't know precisely what the knowledge of the audience is, so for some it will still be over the head, for some it's much as you already by know. So now we want to look at what let's say for keys. So the first Disappointment is that so one to a plus one on surface S um with churn class. Sheet. 
<coughs> and we need to restrict what she needs to want to allow for one last case. So we restrict any page. So somehow, I mean, there are different ways of seeing it. It's uh, usually impossible to have modelized basis of things if they have non-trivial automorphism. And so one needs to have some condition which prevents that. <clears throat> and here the condition that we put is that sheets are not allowed to have too big subsheets. That's the same condition. Um, On its D max, and we have we have the sheet cohomology H I of X E I cohomology. So it does H zero. And then the whole of the other factors take is um, so five the alternate is some so like it is for the other number, the alternate is some homology.
that means that all subsheaves of E are small in the sense that they cannot have too many. The Hill polynomial cannot be large. So uh, obviously this only makes sense. It's a polynomial. <coughs> so either find what it means for polynomial, but this is the same as saying whenever n is large enough. This is actually because the H was supposed to be ample equivalent to saying that the you can replace the zero polynomial just by the space of sections with that simple. So the subsheets are not allowed to have too many sections. And then uh, it was shown by Kizik and Mariana that there is a modular space for sheets. So maybe it just would take this modular space. Say M S H negate just with on the surface S now given rank showing it as C1 and C2 uh, of H stable. Um question of these two H. The given rank. And this joint class C1. And in fact, the fact each semi stable Um, I forgot to mention here, there's also the notion stable. Stable is um, stable means here to always uh, restrict inequality. And then um, so there's an open subset. M S. Yes, I want to H here. H and R C one stable of this model and space, which permits a stable sheet. So, so I, I didn't precise. So the X is more or less usually uh, this will not be what I mentioned a fine modulized space. So it doesn't necessarily have a universal family, but it sometimes have. In general, it's what's called a coarse modular space. It's a bit long. What? Okay, so <laughs> not quite sure how to. So, <clears throat> yeah, for one thing, one can, uh, you know, if one refers to what I said here, that objects uh, which such that the model like space exists uh, should have uh, no non trivial automorphisms. Um, one can show quite easily from this definition, uh, it's a, an exercise, that stable sheets are simple. So that means that the automorphisms are only multiplying by a constant. So this is one indication. But you know, why precisely semi stable? I mean, it's a long proof. So one, um, one has to somehow um, see that. 
you know, you can somehow parameterize this. <coughs> so, what you want to do is that, so this is somehow a GIP problem. So you, you can have a suitable bot scheme if you know what that is. I mean, I think you know, but I mean, I don't know the audience, um, which um, parameterizes such sheaves together with uh, some uh, vector space of section, say. So, and then um, then to get the moduli space, you have to be able to take the quotient in the sense of GIP. And the notion of stable, the semi-stable that I introduced here is precisely the, no, the notion of stable Gaussian semi-stability that one means. That, that you know is imposed by GIP. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. So um, maybe just as an example, so we have already in, seen an example, although it was obvious, namely, um, if I look at the Hilbert scheme of n points on S. This action is the modelized space on X of sheaves of rank one, uh, first joint class zero, and second joint class equal to n to identify the spot homology of X with the integer. This is uh, by identifying the scheme that with its ideal sheet. So, one can show that uh, the ideal sheaf of a zero dimensional subscheme of length n, you know, is the ideal sheaf, so a subsheaf of O. So, the, if you uh, take its double U, this will be O. So, the first term class is zero. And it follows from the definition, if one works it out, that the second term class will actually be the number n. So, how many points is the parameter? Yeah, and the, so this gives some kind of set theoretic correspondence with the non trivial fact that to prove that these are actually isomorphs. That doesn't follow just by this. So, <clears throat> so this modelized space has also something which is called the expected dimension, which is a strange thing, which, however, will be. Um, Later. So let me assume for simplicity uh, that the first set number is zero. So the homology of x is zero. So then this modular space. Will usually be quite single. It often has many components of varying dimensions. But it has something, but it has an ex it has an expected dimension. Which one you write down? It is two R two minus. Uh, R minus one, one square uh, minus R square minus R square. So we have these numbers. So obviously, this means the second fourth homology that I said is that on the surface. This number C1 multiplied by C1, we have evaluated on the fundamental class, gives us a number, so this is a certain number. So what does this mean? We have assigned this ridiculous number to the modular space and came into the expected dimension in spite of the fact that the actual dimension of the modular space might be different. So what do we mean by that? So it's somehow the dimension that M should have. And so, for instance, one can describe this in terms of the Tuanishi map, namely at every point.
in M, or to get the T in polarized space, we have uh, the tangent space in M, and which will be some vector space, this is E to the M, and I'll uh, maybe I call it the vector space. And then there's the Guanishi map. Space e to the k, which I could call the obstruction space. So we have this at every point m in m, at every point t in m, there is such a picture such that first this difference, so the second dimension I call want to call the e of m. So that uh, this uh, the e of m. Equal to the difference of these numbers, m minus k, and a neighborhood, an open neighborhood of our point P in M, uh, in the analytic topology, is the inverse image of zero under this map. So one should say that the numbers M and K are not fixed, they depend on the point in the space, but the difference is always the same. This is the virtual number, this is fixed. And so one could say that locally in the elliptic topology, the modelized space is obtained as a zero set of uh, K equations in uh, M dimensional affine space, uh, where the difference of these two is this. So if these equations were transversal, the dimension would be equal to M minus K. So that's the virtual dimension. And so if uh, somehow the world was good, this thing was would be smooth of the expected dimension. Now we will come back to that. Uh, we can see in particular it follows that the dimension of every component of F is bigger equal to the virtual dimension. Because uh, if they're not transversal, they impose less. Than. Now I want to briefly call that I can slow. <laughs> So maybe, yeah, okay, I can still go by my notes. So I want to take the call of the formula, which is somehow something we will want to interpret or maybe or whatever. So in this case, we take S and uh, project by the surface. Um, and I assume, say, that the first homology here we give it less to five, and we assume that the geometric genus of S, which is equal to the dimension of the zero, yes, is bigger than. These are just the holomorphic two forms on S. So there should be non trivial holomorphic two forms on S. So, for instance, uh, this will be two, two surfaces. Uh, usually, it will be two for surface of general type. There are some and I mean, most surfaces have that. It would not be true for something like a two. Um, now we choose 
Um, and we have, we can look, uh, and we choose also C1, C2, uh, such that the modelized phase is at now the only direction, phase 2, C1, C2, consists only of stages. So if you look at the condition, this uh, actually becomes a certain condition on the chart graph. There must be certain things that will be relatively fine. So for instance, if um, C2 and the product C1 times H are relatively prime, so if this is odd, then uh, this would be the case, but it is much more general. And then in that case, there is formula for the order numbers of these modelized states, which comes from Felix. I will maybe so write where the uh, you know just in section number. So this influence over x squared. So, which means this is just, if I take a right chunk like this for alpha, this is your alpha homology of n, then this is always meant to be, I take the pairing between this homology class and the fundamental class of s, according to my label, so this is the number. Now, I will just make a simplifying assumption to make the formula nicer, which is in the case. Maybe later I will take the general formula for today. So assume there is a filter filter in the canonical linear system. So it means we assume there is this an irreducible curve, which is a zero set of the polynomial filter. So this would, for instance, be the case if PG is bigger than zero for a minimal surface of Okay. And in that case, we have the Barbarici formula. Which says, uh, so this is uh, written by Barbara Wickley in 1994. Um, so we put, say, eta bar x to be this infinite product we have already seen. We normalization to the eta function. Then the of x is a better function from n to z x to the x squared. Both of these are modular forms. We'll maybe later ask more about that. And then I write down psi of x, which is this crazy expression, a times one is one to two times. Eta bar x squared. Well, this I take the power of x squared. And then I take two times eta of x to the four squared divided by theta. And this I take the power of x squared. So write down this complicated power series. There's a complication can wish information that see what this look like if I have the sum of the square itself s. And then the statement is that uh, the order number of the modular space is equal to the coefficient. The virtual dimension of the modelized space so, M is this 
template of this expression. Okay. So this is a rather compared formula. So think of it. So it says that the order number of the modelized space depends only on the holomorphic order of the S and T S squared. And there's a closed formula for it, which does it for all modelized spaces at the same time for all surfaces, you know, in terms of just the virtual landscape. So this is rather uh, a very amazing formula. There's a, a few problems with it. So there's some issues. So one thing, I mean, it's not clear to me whether it's actually true. So, so maybe this is not true. At least we have to be sure what we mean by it. So what we actually, I'm convinced it's true in a certain sense, but this is only if we interpret what we mean by the whole number. So perfect. And um, the second one that's actually not an issue, but I can just say it. Um, if you look at the actual paper of our written, there are enough, there are more terms. They're not just there's not just this, there's some more terms, but these are not supposed to compute. Are not supposed to come from the order number of the modelized space, but they're supposed to describe invariance of a certain other modelized spaces, some modelized space for fixed pairs. So there are other terms. Um, I will have to talk about that another time. So what we have here, some different things. <clears throat> so I want to first deal with the first issue. So what uh, is wrong? So uh, how do we interpret this all enough? Which is something that I There's one thing I forgot to mention when, um, but maybe I can. So, do we want to talk about virtual topology? Okay. So if I know, maybe I can be more precise to what I said about if it works for because X is a non-singular the projective variety some dimension N, we have to set some method chart. In the two X and uh, we can if alpha is element of the homology of S, you know, you know that the ring, we can multiply things, we can associate a number to it by evaluating it, preparing it. Via the duality between homology and homology. So we get intersection numbers. Which 
And so now we want to do this in our situation with the modular space, but we want to do it in such a way as if the modular space was non singular, but we know it's singular. And somehow uh, it's supposed to be behaved like a non singular of dimension, the virtual dimension, or the, the expected dimension. So, so we need to think, we need that. X is projective, therefore compact, so that we can integrate over the fundamental class, otherwise we can't. And uh, we also, these things like this will only be true with non singular. So, so this M is compact, so it's projective, but it's really singular. Dimension. So, if you want to define invariance, okay. which behaves. Then, you know, if you look at that, 
epsilon, we have the standard exact sequence. Um, we have I modulo I squared maps into the higher the differential to the differential forms on Y is to M and the full kernel is the differential on M. Okay, so this uh, standard sequence. <coughs> um, and so you could say so that the dual of the this uh, P form one form is the is your detention bundle, so you have the of the detention vectors. So you have that here. Um, so you could say that the detention space of M is M. I don't want the size is somehow space here. You will space the M. And you could say that the obstruction space. So what prevents us from going from the edge direction and still say inside M, okay. in which we had in this Burnish picture, at M should be something like we have a big kernel of these at M. So this exact sequence tells us somehow what the tension space of this, we can see somehow the potential space and the tension space here, and you can somehow see, and the other thing we have to do is to assume, so this is the situation that we have. Now we assume we have one thing more, namely that this thing can be described in terms of vector bar. Perfect obstruction theory and M is a complex of vector bundles, two vector bundles, two vector bundles, e minus one to Zero by a map that we call C. Um, uh, of vector bundles M. Together with the map uh, to this situation here. So we have with the most and most complexes. Um, so e minus one, as I said, will be c zero. We had also the i modulo i squared goes with b to omega y restricted to m, and we have this morphism of complexes, which is just maps here, such as everything commutes. Um, such that the following holds. At this level, one on the formality level, there's an isomorphism that this level is subjected to more precisely if I take P, we take the induced map from the co kernel of P here to the co kernel of P. It's an isomorphism. Second is that if I take the same use map by P on the kernel of P, on the kernel of P, to the kernel of P, the kernel of this and this is subjective. So now 
now what this means from this point of view is that so the co-kernel downstairs here, the dual of the co-kernel is the tangent space. That is the dual of the kernel is the abstraction space. So that means we have a complex of vector bundles which from which we can recover all the tangent spaces and such that in the kernel we are contained all the obstructions. Somehow we can describe all tension spaces and all obstructions in terms of just the two vector bundles. Okay, so this thing is called perfect obstruction. Sometimes one says one perfect because of one step. But then, anyway, we take the one to the thing. And then in this case, we can construct what. Uh, so, I should maybe say that you know uh, the expected dimension. M, which is the expected dimension of M with respect to this thing, could be the difference of the rank of these two vector bundles. So I should have said this. When I say vector bundle, I mean vector bundle of the final rank. So this is the rank. Now, in this case, the Something which is called a virtual function star. Which lies in the homology corresponding to the expected dimension. And Say the Euler number is just one more minute. Yeah, okay. 
Yeah, I mean, I will leave that the special. I, I mean, but uh, so so. This is somehow like this, this replaces the cotension, so it must be the dual. So, um, so this is therefore just the class which I call E zero minus one in the broken of vector bundles on M, where E i is equal to E. So instead of now the tangent bundle is no longer the vector bundle, it's a complex of two vector bundles. And then the virtual order number of M is just we just apply the top index theorem. Uh, I mean, we just write down the top index theorem for the order number it has existed. So, uh, so if this uh, integrates over the virtual fundamental class M, the term class corresponding to the dimension, with the dimension of the modular space of the virtual tangent. Okay. So we just um, and I mean, this turns out with nice properties, but what we have done is we just have proposed that with this new definition of the tension bundle, we have um, uh, we have this top index here. So this is the virtual definition of all numbers, which rather, uh, which is somewhat complicated, we have this whole hocus pocus with this E and so on, but uh, it's actually reasonably computable. And uh, reasonably nice really. Anyway, so this is the definition. I mean, in some sense, not quite the definition because I have to we'll have to explain to you how this works for our M. So what is the obstruction theorem for the modular space of sheets? But at any rate, uh, I stop there. So this is the number that should appear in the formula. Yeah, yeah, that's the number that should appear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, well, oh. <laughs> well, I lost everybody early enough to that. Okay, I guess we can uh, resume not next time, maybe, but yeah, yeah, we could do maybe you can do a recap on the last part. On the what? On the last piece and from this year. Okay, okay, I mean, we can, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, obviously, uh, yeah. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.